So this is going to be a short video tutorial on the new VBS4. And on the screen, you can see a description of the products that BISIM offers uh, as of IITSEC this year, which is happening next week. On the left, you can see we have VBS4, which is a whole earth virtual desktop training capability. So you run this on a personal computer uh, with a graphics card. It provides everything that you need to train uh, and a whole lot more. Here we can see VBS Blue IG, which is for deployment on simulators, flight simulators, helicopter simulators, UAV simulators, uh, anything you might need. And you'll see this VBS World Server, which is very new and will be quite unfamiliar to VBS3 users because it streams terrain data, whole earth terrain data, down to VBS instances. And you only need one VBS World Server uh, installed on the local area network or on the cloud, feeding that data down to these connected uh, products. And here you can see we have some new VBS4 capabilities. VBS Control is included in VBS4, VBS Plan is included, and also VBS Geo. And we'll run through these when we get to uh, later in the tutorial. And down here you can see we also have our SDKs. So let's have a look now at how you start VBS4. Now, VBS4 has started using the VBS4 launcher. Users of VBS3 will be quite familiar with this, uh, but the new element is this VBS World Server IP address. And this should be populated automatically after you've installed the World Server, uh, but you enter in the IP address there, and this is where VBS4 is going to access all of its terrain data from. Uh, I'm gonna click Launch Modules here. That's gonna start up VBS4. And the first thing you'll notice, especially if you're a VBS3 user, is how fast this new application loads. So we can see here that the engine is now initializing. Uh, and in just a few moments, we will be viewing the world from space. There you go. So VBS4 has now loaded and you're ready to start with your first battle space. In VBS4, we have a very well-defined workflow that again will be new for VBS3 users. And it's the prepare, execute, and assess workflow. In the prepare phase, you effectively prepare a scenario for training. That would include some terrain edits using VBS Geo, which is a visit of four replacement uh, in VBS4. It's where you do all your terrain editing uh, in game. You have VBS Plan, which is a planning tool, a mission planning tool, very easy to use, designed for commanders to quickly sketch out, for example, a company level plan uh, and set up phase lines to coordinate timings. And then VBS Editor, which is a 3D editor and currently very similar to the VBS3 editor. You then execute and you do have some of those elements still available to you to change the plan. You, of course, conduct first person training. You'll have soldiers or trainees operating vehicles and moving around in the virtual battle space. And of course, we do have radio simulation as well. Then you'll assess uh, and then you'll repeat. And that's the workflow that's behind VBS4. So let's have a look at how this workflow operates in game. Over here on the left, you can see we would have our list of battle spaces. Let's create a new battle space by simply left clicking somewhere on the world. You can enter a name, a description and some tags. Click Save Changes, and now that new battle space is visible here, and we can see the Prepare, Execute, and Assess workflow. Under Prepare, we have Plan, Editor, and Geo. We can execute the scenario, assuming that a scenario has been created, and we can see all of our after action reviews here. Now, a big difference from VBS3 is that all of these battle spaces are now saved on the VBS World Server centrally to minimize the number of files you need to drag around between computers. Uh, here as well, we can access points of interest. Uh, we obviously have a, a location lookup here. Now this is searching the VBS World Surfer, Server for these locations. You do not need to be connected to the internet to operate the VBS World Server and use this location lookup. So obviously we can kind of come in here and uh, you know we've just searched for Japan and we've come all the way down now to, um, to ground level in Japan after using this location search here. Uh, we also have uh, some camera controls. Obviously, we're in kind of an orbit camera mode here, and I can move the, the camera around. This tells you how to do that. We have options, which are set centrally. This is a big change from VBS3, and this options menu is accessible from most places in VBS4. We have documentation uh, accessible from within the product now. This is, again, a big change from VBS3. And we have a notification center here as well. Now we're going to go through the process of creating a new battle space and we're going to do the Battle of San Francisco. So we're going to go to San Francisco first. 
uh, I've clicked on the point of interest for San Francisco and we've zoomed in. Uh, and now we're going to just come down here to the south of San Francisco and, and this is where we're going to be working. So the first thing you'll do is left click on new battle space and then left click somewhere on the terrain. You would enter in the battle space name. Uh, so in this case, it's going to be Battle of San Fran. Or we can enter the description and the tags if we want to. Click Save Changes and now we can access the workflow. So first thing we're going to do is go into the VBS editor. And this is going to load uh, an interface that's very, very similar to what you would have seen in VBS3. Uh, and uh, as I'll show you, that's, uh, that's intentional. Uh, but we've also got these other two modes, Plan and Geo. And we can just quick switch by left clicking through these different modes. Uh, this editor mode, as you can see, is very similar to VBS3. This will be refactored to use the HTML interfaces similar to what you can see here. Uh, but this is what it looks like for the VBS4 prototype at IITSEC. Now the use of the editor is very similar to VBS3. And you start by placing down an observer unit. So we're going to place down just a Ford observer here. Uh, and then you would place down in 2D or 3D the content that comprises your scenario. So we'll do a very quick and simple scenario here. We're just going to place down a vehicle. It's going to be a Humvee. Uh, click OK. Um, change its orientation here. We're going to place down a really quick uh, IED, which is going to explode on proximity. And then we're going to simply give that vehicle some behavior. So we just want it to move down the road like this. Uh, and of course, now we can just go ahead and preview this scenario by clicking the preview button that you can see up here. So now we can watch the action here. We're just our forward observer. We're going to zoom in using our binoculars and we're actually going to watch the, uh, the events unfold. The IED has gone off and the has been damaged and has stopped. So now we can go back into the editor. Now we're going to have a look at some of these different editing modes that VBS4 makes available. So we just looked at the editor. Now we're going to look at VBS Geo. Now VBS Geo will be a complete Visitor 4 replacement for VBS. It's where you'll do all of your what you see is what you get terrain editing. Now Terra Tools is still supported, uh, of course, and it's how you would create really massive VBS4 terrains. But if you're working in a localized area, this is the tool you'll use. Um, so we're going to have a look at uh, some of the, the different tools that are available here, starting with the elevation tool. Uh, so we can basically select uh, an option here. We're going to do a line and we're just going to do a very simple trench just like this uh, using vector drawing and pressing enter. And now we can just cut a trench directly into the terrain. So just clicking twice here, um, we've now cut this trench directly into the terrain as you can see. Uh, road editing is very similar. You click on road, uh, you click on the road type, for example, a dirt road, left click, uh, left click, enter, and that immediately creates your road in the terrain, as you can see, digging into uh, the ground uh, perfectly. And you have all of these different road types available, as you can see here. Um, let's have a look also at model placement. You can left click here on model, uh, click place, select a, a specific type of building. You can filter and so on and so forth. Um, you would just left click on the model, um, place it on the terrain. And as you can see here, it's automatically placed this enterable destructible building. And it's also dug that building perfectly into the terrain uh, as you would expect. And finally, in this version of VBS Geo, we have surface editing. So you can see here we have a surface brush. There are a number of different uh, tools available, as well as a history brush, I should point out, which allows you to undo changes you've made. Uh, and some parameters here in the top right. And you simply left click to create the vegetation on the terrain. And you'll see the vegetation uh, does not get created on the roads or on top of other features. Uh, it, it actually gets placed quite smartly, as you can see. Uh, and it's also a good time to point out that in uh, VBS4, all of the vegetation content is in fact full 3D. So you're not uh, looking at billboards up close like you are in some uh, other applications. So that's it for terrain editing. Now we're going to look at uh, VBS plan, which you access by clicking the plan button just here.
Okay, so I've moved the camera up the hill a bit and cleared the battle space so we can see what's going on. And we're gonna use VBS plan to quickly sketch out uh, a scheme of maneuver now. So first off, we're gonna place down a hostile uh, infantry squad. We're gonna place them here at this intersection. We're gonna place down a friendly armored core platoon. And the idea is that it's really quick and easy for a commander or an administrator to just kind of sketch out uh, a plan. I'm not placing any 3D units here, we're just basically placing military symbols that will later become 3D units. And we can also give them various orders. So for example, uh, a move order here, we'll move up the hill to the enemy position. Um, likewise, the infantry units here will move up the hill. And we can also place down control measures, for example, phase lines. So that's what you're about to see here. It's a phase line that I've just created and it's going to trigger at three minutes. And we can see down here a timeline uh, that allows us to preview the action. So we can see where units are gonna be at any particular time. Here they're waiting at the phase line and then moving off towards their objectives. Now, as you can see on the screen, you can view the plan in 3D as well as 2D. Uh, there are a number of other features here, other control measures, for example, boundary lines or objective markers. Uh, but when you're finished creating your plan, you would just simply click Build Mission. Now, what Build Mission does is actually create all of the 3D entities and all of the waypoints they need to carry out their attack. So here we can see our M1 tanks uh, right here, and we could also move over here and see our, uh, our blue four guys, um, our different soldiers down here, as well as some op four up in the uh, this position up here in the intersection. Now we could go into the editor and modify things. We could, for example, change the behavior um, by editing the specific waypoints. For example, here is the waypoint that defines the behavior of this uh, tank platoon here. We could also go in and put in some defensive positions, maybe up here for the OP4. But for this example, we are just gonna execute the mission as it is. And so it's a very important point to note that you don't have to do anything. You can simply build the mission and immediately execute from here. So let's have a look at that now. So we're now viewing the action from the VBS4 real-time editor. The tanks are moving out in accordance with their maneuver orders and the infantry are also moving towards the phase line. Once the infantry reach the phase line, they're gonna take a knee and wait for the tanks to be in position. So the tanks are almost at their phase line. In fact, you can see the, the lead tank about to cross. And as soon as that happens, the infantry will continue to progress up the hill. Uh, and in a second, they will start to take effective fire. So you can see the firefight has started and the tanks, as soon as they're able, will also engage. And eventually the blue four will be victorious in this particular scenario. So that completes our uh, tutorial on the basics of VBS4. Of course, now we could go and execute uh, the Battle of San Francisco if we wanted to. And after we did the execution, we could see our after action reviews here. Uh, so this is a prototype release of VBS4. We're gonna continue working on it in the new year for a, uh, a broad release that will replace VBS3 uh, towards the middle of 2020. For your information, I've been running this on uh, my laptop it is a RTX 2080 QMAX graphics card, basically the recommended uh, system specification for running VBS4. Uh, so thank you for watching and keep an eye out for future tutorial videos. Thank you.